Hello there, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls. Marshall here, and I'm bringing you a one versus one that was submitted to me by both of these players independently, actually. Both of them thought that it was a great game, uh, and so they both tried to get in touch with me. So that means that I have no idea as to how this game go pans out. I have no clue initially as to who wins this game, so let's see what it's like. We've got Disc Rape in his customary lavender. Going for a bot's first into two vehicles. Bot fab times one, two, probably three. Down on the south in chocolate brown we have Hacker, or rather coffee brown. We have Hacker. Recently into Uber and then dropped back down to Plat, I think. So we're talking very high level play here between these two and we see two fabs up for disc and three for hacker. So a slight difference here. Looks like Disc is going to go for a more aggressive build. Hacker possibly for a more defensive, uh, more turtly or passive build, but we'll have to see. But we can see Hacker's going for a massive pre-canned queue with his com. Bots and vehicles ahoy with a couple of air factories smattered around. The Firefly out as well, just to guard these approaches and have a look at what's going on. We've already been able to see a boombot hop over there, take a take a, a skitter out. And uh, Hacker now going to be defending against a bit of aggression from Disc, bringing in his docks. Of course, docks no longer have their anti-air capability. Here comes an Icarus to try and deal with it, but he's flown straight over them. Great piloting on that Icarus there, but these three could potentially pose a little bit of an annoyance to expanding fabricators if they're left to their own devices, shall we say, into into the longer term part of this game. But equally, Hacker's like, no, I'm, I'm just going to go and threaten him myself. I'm going to hope he hasn't got any anti-air, but he can see that he has his Firefly. Hacker can see that there's this spinner here, so Hacker comes in, thinks I can just about stay at range and take out that fab, and does. Down goes the fab. So that's one of Disc Rape's expanding fabs. Disc now only has one fabricator. Hacker up to five, though. We've got three expanding towards the rear craters and metal ramparts, as it were. One over to the western crater. And one back into the base to assist by the looks of things. But something you'll notice about this ASAP map is it's not very far between the bases. We're talking about a radius 450 map here. And also between the bases is this deep crater. Now there are two types of craters. There's the sort of shallow craters like all of these down the sides that uh, units can path inside of and everything like that and you can see them walking around in these craters here. These are sort of shallow craters and then you've got these deep ones with these really steep ridged sides. You can really tell the difference at a glance and these ones cannot be passed through by units so they kind of create a little bit of a, a blocker for terrain if you will so it's a bit of an interesting on pass here between the two bases. You've got to go around these two craters in the middle. And that's what this grape is doing now on the western approach. I think he's going to need to have some units ready for this. Or could just respond with his commander. But either which way, this grape probably doesn't want to push straight into the base here. Probably just wants to circle round, get the expansion, and raid that. That's typically what you want to do in the early game. Is uh, Particularly if you've only got small raiding forces. Don't bother going up against the commander. Because they're not going to last very long. And you're better served by taking out expansions and fabricators elsewhere on the map. And that's what we're seeing here. We've seen an, an expansion taken down, fabricator taken down, and that's going to delay Hacker in that direction of play. Hacker now, his commander is completely located outside of his base, had to can all of his queue and reset it up there just so he could respond to this threat from disc, which still exists, I might add. Getting taken out now by a few sparks, but still. Meanwhile, Hacker, there's a few bits of air around the map. Disc isn't too worried about air by the looks of things. He's gone very heavy vehicles rather than air, whereas Hacker's gone moderate air, I think, considering the, the Icarus play. He's only got a single air factory, uh, and Disc has only got the one, but the play for the, for the Icarus suggests a much more aggressive desire in the air. But flying them over the, the spinners there isn't great. But as I was saying with the, the heavy vehicles, that allows Disc to really focus on going for tanks 
and then putting in some anti-air spinners there as well rather than having to go full on air and the map's small enough that uh, that really works because if I show you one of the ranges of these spinners that's the sort of range we're talking about about anti-air so that's quite a significant no-fly zone as it were for weak aircraft Icarus being one of them means that whenever Hacker engages he really wants to try and take out those uh, those spinners up first if if he's going for an airplane but he's, he's, he's only just starting his second factory so we'll have to wait a little bit to see that sort of stuff come to fruition this now coming down on the eastern side now that uh, he sees that Hacker's army is all down on the west he's gonna come down on the east and think okay you're all the way over there I'm gonna come down here now and once again, threatening Hacker, having to reroute a bunch of forces. Look at this. All the way from this expansion being rerouted. I wonder if the command will move again. Probably, and rather hopefully not. But then again, this expansion of three mechs here is very, very vulnerable. Very, very vulnerable indeed. And down they will go. Hacker will have to respond to this. He's got a few fabs out here that can always circle back, which is better than nothing. Disc says, look at that. He's, he's taken down those three, and he's like, okay, I'm going to come back now. There's no point in me continuing to push. He says as he just holds it there, actually. <laughs> I was like, why would you bother coming back? But yeah, that was a, a good trade for Disc. Now he still has his unit presence here. Of course, I can see it, but Disk is going to prevent the re-expansion to this zone for a while. Hacker trying to mop up in the air game to give himself a little bit of leeway elsewhere there, and is and is only uh, creating a little bit of an attack himself now. He's taken out four mechs in a factory already, which is pretty good for him. But he's actually uh, in the lead as far as resources are concerned. 150 metal to 103. Gonna get mopped up there quite nicely. Bumblebee! Two fabs down for disc. Nice win. Nice win picked up indeed. Look at this. Hacker's commander again going for a stroll. Must be leg day today. Disc's small little army. In fact, Hacker's commander here is, is doing a good thing. He's popped up some factories over on that side, shoring up this sort of line through here. And now he's going to move his commander over here and do the same on this side. Which is, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to complain. That's pretty good. Pretty good. And he's even got some fabricators up on disc side of the map now. Although uh, a little under threat. We'll want to fall back there, but still, you know, you may as well take it. It's not going to hurt. As long as you don't lose those fabs. Try not to lose those fabs. Of course, losing fabricators means that you lose a bit of momentum in terms of your unit production because you have to replace your units with uh, fabricators. So you slow it down a little bit. Look at this, it's a bit of a bit of to and froing here. This is this is really quite a nice game. And notice what neither player is doing. Neither player is stockpiling units in their base. There's a lot of a lot of uh, lower skilled players and newer players like to sit their units in their base and wait. No 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 no, your units are useful. Get them out doing stuff. Like look at this, Disgrape with like five or six tanks or so came out here and forced Hacker to move a whole bunch of units. He might not necessarily have got a whole bunch of wins, he certainly killed off a, a mechs there or whatever, but he's forced an entire reroute of this army, which has opened up a whole other area. You know, so consider it like that. Okay, now up top. Doing to Disc what Disc does to him. It's only fair, no hard feelings. What's Disc's commander doing here? Is he. T what is he doing? 
this is a, the most bizarre thing to see. Disc's commander's going full on Rambo. Like, what, what? There's a massive army here, Disc. What are you doing? Was this a misclick? What are you playing at? A couple of Uber cannons will deal with this, but still. We're going to need a few more Uber cannons than that. Preferably in the middle of this blob, but. Disc, you're losing health like madman. And like a madman, he's gonna. It, could this be the end? 14, 12, 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3 percent! 3 percent! And bombers come in and intercepted 1 percent! On Disc's commander. 1 percent! of health left. Hacker. Oh my goodness, that was close. One percent. Was that a misclick or was that intended for Disc's commander to be so far offside? There's another lesson, folks. Don't send your commander to go walkies, especially an unprotected commander, especially so far out of the base. What was he playing at? Now Disc's commander has to get back into the base. Hacker wants to go hunting. That's a couple of shots from popping. All Hacker needs are a good bunch of bombers finding that. Like, and he knows that. He needs to keep these bumblebees alive. He's got three air factories now. He wants to get some... Look at this. Boom bots. He knows that just one of those has to hit home. Just the one. And all he has to do is find Disc's commander. But Disc is saying... You can try and find him, but I'm going to move units around here, there, and everywhere. Have fun getting through there without me seeing you. All the while, I'm just going to expand elsewhere on the map and see if you can stop me. And Hacker's like, okay, game on. I'll stop you. I see your fab trying to build anti-air. I'm going to stop him doing that. And Disc's like, okay, I see you trying to stop me. I'm going to taunt you with another one percenter. <laughs> It's, it's disc rate. Disc 1%. <laughs> the new gamer tag. Disc the 1%. My goodness. What a scare. And now his commander's there on the naughty step. Motionless. Where's Hacker's air? We've got to what? We've got to take care of that. Two, three bumblebees there. Two more, and you've got enough to overcome the Commander AA. For certain, you don't want to be. You, know, you want to be certain that these things are that you can overcome them. Bumblebees coming in. Discrape needs to keep tabs on that air. Ooh, a couple of bumblebees were taken out by. Those hummingbirds, quite fortunate there for Disc. Keeping hackers' numbers down. The boombot's still sitting waiting as a nice little side option. He hasn't transitioned fully into them, but these boombots are also good against tanks. And Disc has gone heavy tanks. And here we go. In comes Hacker. He's like, okay, I want this. Let's have a look at where Hacker's commander is, actually, because, you know, let's keep tabs on both of these cogs. I feel like at this point, both of these guys are in perilous positions. Look at Hacker's commander, completely out of position again, although not quite as extreme as Disc, but still. In comes Disc, though, with a big push on the west. And Hacker's military is not here. Hacker has the numbers, but they're all in the air. They're all anti-air in the air. They're not here to defend the base. And his power line's exposed. There go a few P-Gens, and there aren't many elsewhere. Hacker is going to struggle in the power game. He's run out of P-Gens. And Disc's just going to sit there, happy as Larry. Hacker now down to 5k power, and still falling. Disc mopping up the original base. Lovely stuff. What a dynamic game this one has been. 
Units moving everywhere. No big blobs. Little bits and pieces of defence. Look at this. Cover the line to just make a defence. But Hacker. He says, I want that 1%. Give it to me. And he's got a lot of units coming up this side. Does he know that Disc's commander is on this side? I don't know if he does. Let's have a look what he can see. He sees a big army from Disc. He thinks, can I fight this? Again, he's still looking for that commander. Don't forget, he wants to know where that commander is. He's not using his air to scout, which really should be, and necessarily not wandering into that, but... Look, from Hacker's perspective, he just saw a big old surround of vehicles, and yet he's still fielding heavy docks. Not ideal. That being said, the docks are great for running around like this and raiding, but they're not great for engagements, and he just saw that the engagement force is not in his favour. Disc there now, in the lead on the army front. And where's Hacker's air gone? Must have flown over some anti-air or something. Where is it gone? Let's follow it. More boombots coming out of this factory, but Hacker comes up here, Disc says, okay. I'm going to use what units I have in my base to defend against this. The hacker's like, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to run my air around. I mean, he's lost a significant chunk of it already by this point, so I don't know what he's done. Possibly tried to raid with it and just flew it over some AA. I don't know. Well, either which way, that army gets mopped up. Disc mops up Hacker's original base, and Hacker's commander is completely offside again, going to this large crater on uh, on the reverse of the map there, in the east. And Disc's commander, nice and safe and sound, in the middle of a bunch of factories, and a point defence, just in case. And yeah, Hacker just goes and sits his air over the base. What a Nelly! What a Nelly! He really needs to get his economy in order. Look at this, 68 economy, metal-wise. He's got a long way to go to catch up. And he can either go and expand himself or bring this down to the level. And my gosh, another turret goes up for disc. Big wins everywhere. A few units killed off, fabricators killed off, but still, disc prevails in the resources, in the raiding, and he sees a commander here. And Hacker's booms have been exposed. Disc knows that Hacker has booms. Hence, the PD. Looks like uh, one of them got raided there briefly. Killed that off. Oh no, I'm just looking at it from a different perspective, like a Muppet. Disc just has massive production at this point. Eleven factories to six. And the resource count is massive in comparison. So that early aggression got Hacker a little bit on the back foot, expanded in the other other direction. Hacker there with three fabs to open. You know, going for a traditional opening. But just got caught out by Disc, I think in a number of places, even though he got an early Faber snipe on disc, and for the longest time had the upper hand on disc, disc just had the better composition, I think. Faber, uh, Hacker, rather, has been fielding docks the whole game, 
against an army of drifters and sparks. But he almost got a kill on the desk. The thing is, can he pull it out of the stops? Can he pull out all the stops in order to get that commander snipe? There are still boom bots being produced. I do not see where Hacker's Boom Army is anymore. And Disc just has totaled Hacker's production. 61 metal only now. That's two there, one there, and two here for Hacker. Unless Hacker can get a snipe, it's GG. Hacker has to just hit this commander once, and Disc knows that. Look at this. Mine's coming up. He wants to keep that commander safe. Disc here ready to swallow up, taking no prisoners. Needs to go and investigate on this side and see, oh, there's a bunch of sneaky factories over here. You guys want the commander snipe? No, sir. That is not happening. Down comes Disc. He sees the little base. The little sneaky base. Hacker now down. Even more metal as Disc continues to raid. I mean, Hacker, in theory, in theory, could get a win here if he moved his... If, if only his commander was on this side, because then he could have boxed Disc's commander. Commander v. Commander. Mano a mano. But now he's cut off. He can't do that without units converging on his position and Disc's commander's moving out. He's staying safe with his army where he knows that Hacker is not. And Hacker has nothing left to do but stand on the edge of a crater feeling mournful and sorry for himself. At failing to reload that little bit faster to pop off that one more shot. If only Jeffrey hadn't been sleeping on the job and had shot in good time, Hacker would have won ten minutes ago. Whether Jeffrey was the ant, the grenadier, or the spark, I have no idea. I'm not very good with names to faces, I'm afraid. But what a game. And domination by disc as well. Just raiding in the right places all the time, keeping units active. All over the place. And there's the scout, sees the comm. And here come the units. As Hacker has no fabs. One Firefly factory. Next to no units and little income. Disc's commander has no need to engage and should probably be running in the opposite direction just in case. I could hack a die to mines here. We'll die sooner. What a game. What a game. Well, folks, I hope you enjoyed that. Do let me know what you thought in the comments. Try to keep them spoiler-free as possible. And uh, don't forget to do all the YouTube engagement stuff. You know, it really helps me out. Every like, every comment, every share really helps me out, folks. It's been great. Thanks very much for watching, though. I've been Marshall, and have a good one.